Hello everyone, I'm Vivian from Urban PJ Study Center. Today I'm going to make a video about our latest prediction file, which is uh, June prediction file, 2021. So um, let's find out what are the uh, most repeated exam in June 2021. Um, especially today I'm going to focus on the listening section. Okay, let's go through it with me. Now, if you scroll down, actually, uh, for those um, who don't know how to access the prediction file, I will suggest you guys to log into your account uh, from ptstudycenteronline.com.au and you definitely um, receive, um, you know, if you are our student, you receive the username and the password so you can be able to log into um, your account PT portal. All right. Now, from the PT portal, you click here and then you will see uh, PT material and you click on the PT material, it shows you the list of the material and um, you need to select the latest uh, June prediction file. Okay, now um, you need to use your laptop. Apparently um, it doesn't work on, um, you know, mobile phone or uh, tablet because it's quite heavy folder. So yeah, you need to use your laptop. So if we scroll down, I'll click on the index and you can be able to see on the side um, and listening section will start from summarize for context. So let's go through it. And as you can see on the screen, these are the most repeated exam question um, at the moment. So the first one is sound receptor. Now, how can I be able to do the practice from the prediction five? Apparently prediction five is more like, um, you know, the, um, the answer book. So they give you the question and they also give you the answer. However, they uh, will be no audio um, in the prediction file that you can be able to practice. So where can you practice is you need to log into your Iowa account, okay? So um, you need to use your Iowa's account or we just use the name and password again. Um, the same one um, that you uh, have used in your PT portal. So you log into your Iowa account and um, so from your Iowa, um, the main uh, dashboard, right? So you can be able to see writing, reading, listening, and speaking. And since summarize spoken tech is in your listening, I will suggest you guys click on your listening, right? Now, if you see from the prediction file, um, it doesn't give you the audio. However, it does give you the paragraph of the audio, which is the transcript. Right now, how can I use it? So you can go through the transcript and find out what are the keywords about the topic, right? So um, for example, in your exam, um, they don't tell you um, what is the topic of the audio. You are the one that have to find out the topic. So how can you be able to find out the topic of the audio? When you scan through the transcript, um, try to find down the topic based on the techniques that we provide in our lecture, which is repeated words, right? Remember this technique, repeated words, repeated information, if you remember. Okay, so this will help you to find out what is the topic of this audio or of this uh, paragraph. Okay, so basically this is just a transcript. Now you've got sound receptor, right? Not going to talk about anything, little spiky thing going on in the ear. They can, so what are they? The sound receptors, right? These little spiky things, what are they? Sound receptors as well. Uh, come from your ear, your drum, translate it. Mm. These little receptor. Mm. Okay, so as you can see, um, you know, through the uh, paragraph, which is the audio, it's actually this one, just a transcript of the audio. So through um, the transcript, you can be able to see that. Receptor is the keyword, right? Because they keep repeating. So when you are listening, right? You need to pay attention on the repeated words and information that will give you the hint about a topic. Okay, so now what you can do with the transcript, apparently you can write a summary through the transcript as well. Okay, if you don't want um, to do that, you can be able to use your Iowa. You click on summary. Right, and in the summary um, spoken text. 
So what I do is I'm going to shut for the sound receptor, click for the um, evaluation, right? And here's the audio and um, you listen to the audio, you take notes and then you write a summary here. And after you have done it, you click on um, evaluate and then you receive the um, IWAR report, which is the feedback from your performance, okay? For your summary, I would say. Right, so that is how you practice, um, um, you know, by using the prediction file. Either you don't have the IWA account, so um, you can use the prediction file as well, you know, um, as, the, um, um, as the material, it's up to you. Now, um, after that, if you can be able to see, um, here's the um, sample answer, okay? So you can go through the sample answer and see what are the keywords that you need to include in your summary. Right, um, apparently I don't recommend you guys to memorize it because um, um, this is not helpful if you can memorize it. All you need to do is find out what are the important information about this topic. For example, sound receptor, small devices, right? Flappy, spiky in the ear, right? They can translate vibrational energy uh, coming from your ear um, hurting your eardrum, vibration. Vibration is a keyword too. Into the flu, right? Physical motion of the receptor, translate again. Electronic, I'm sorry, uh, electrical uh, motion, electrical signal. Mm. And then they need to learn more about sound receptor and find sound receptor remarkable. Okay, so um, these are the keyword from the audio, right? Um, how many of the questions? I don't know how many questions. Let me scroll down. So some question, they do give you the sample answer. Some question, they don't. So um, what you can do is um, you can ask um, the trainer if they can be able to provide you the audio, okay? Or if you can be able to find in your Iowa, all right? Um, but unless you don't really understand about the audio, like, okay, I don't know how to write this audio, perhaps, right? So you can ask for help. So uh, let me check. It's quite a lot, isn't it? So it's pretty much 85, okay? And um, sometimes they do have the um, audio, sometimes, um, they don't because some of the audio um, maybe, and um, you know, this is not available, I would say. Just go through all of them, okay? Uh, because you never know which one gonna be in your exam. So just go through all of it if you can. Now, and this prediction five, I will suggest you guys that for those who really, you know, are trying have enough time to practice, um, your exam is coming soon and um, you need to go through um, as many questions as you can. So practicing is something that, you know, unless you have time. If you don't have time, then definitely, um, you know, um, spend like if you don't have time, definitely practicing is not going to help you rather than you have to go through the material and find out um, what are the exam questions so you can be able to prepare for that. Okay, because you don't have time to practice, that is, you know, that's why the prediction file is more like a solution uh, for you rather than, um, you know, the practice material. Okay, so they give you the question, they give you the solution. All you need to do is go through it, um, you know, if you don't have time to practice, I would say. Okay, so that is how you do um, summarize spoken text. Now, for those who have time, um, to practice, definitely I recommend you guys that you need to practice on Iowa because these are all the exam questions, right? If you can see that, you need to finish all of them before your exam, all right? Because this one is a listening topic. So if you don't, you know, practice, um, you know, your listening skill, it will be difficult in your exam, even though you may know or may remember the sample answer a little bit, but still it's all about your listening skill. Okay, all right now, next one, fill in the blank listening. So for fill in the blank listening, um, apparently in here, we don't have the audio again. Like I said, a prediction file is more like a solution, okay? They give you the question and they give you the answer. All you need to do is go through it and memorize it. So for fill in the blank listening, now, if I don't have time to practice, right? So definitely you have to go through the answer. So what can I do with the answer? Uh, first of all, 
don't just go through the answer itself like this. Rather than I want you guys to go through the paragraph, right? So this paragraph is about William Shakespeare, right? Remains a okay mysterious. Now, in terms of the mysterious, I want you to remember the spelling, okay? How to spell mysterious? Because if you don't know how to spell it, um, definitely you won't be able to get marked for your listening and writing if your answer they are incorrect. So listening in the blank is all about spelling. Okay, so this is something I want you to remember. And you don't want to make spelling mistake in listening in the blank. Because, for example, um, let's say the second blank. There are just two primary sources, right? So it's supposed to be plural. But then um, I put singular. So in terms of putting sources, I put source. Right? Now what happened to my answer? This will consider incorrect. Okay, if this is your answer, it will be incorrect because your spelling is wrong. The correct answer is sources. We see the blue row and um, you won't be able to get more for it. Okay, so listening in the blank is about correct or incorrect answer. So you need to make sure that your spelling, they are correct. Okay, right, the third one, for example, and church document. Um, if you remember, this is one of the finger blank reading as well. So, you know, for PT, this is what happens. Sometimes they pick from your reading finger blank, become listening finger blank. And sometimes summarize spoken text audio, become retail lecture. Okay. So they're using the same material. They just, you know, change the types of the question. So for example, SST, you need to listen to the audio and you need to write down a summary, right? But for retail lecture, you listen to the audio and then you need to retell the lecture. So they're pretty much similar. So most of the time, PS and PT, um, academic, they just pretty much, you know, using the same material um, or repeating the same material, we'll say. Okay, so I will suggest you guys to go through all of the question in here, uh, scan through all of the um, answer, right? For example, number four, you see here, many, it should be plural, okay? So remember. And then for the next one, if you can be able to see traveling. Okay, so a student asked me, um, traveling is one L or double L? Well, both of them, they are correct. One is a British spelling. The other one is American spelling, okay? So it's up to you that um, uh, which English that you learned, you just follow the spelling of um, that particular types of English. So for example, some of them, they learn British English, they follow British spelling. And some of you learn American English, you follow American spelling, okay? So all of them, they pretty much correct. Right, and remember, sometimes you forget the ED too, which is the past ten. okay? How do you know it's a past ten? Check, right? We integrate it here. This is the hint for you when you actually uh, feel your answer, okay? Always check for the, um, the tense, the grammar, and the spelling. That's what I'm saying. Right, so what you can do is you just have to scroll down. Right, and pay attention on the difficult spell word. So for example, um, abrupt, I would say, this is quite um, the word that you don't um, see, you know, um, appear a lot. So I would say it's quite irregular word to see in the, um, you know, the paragraph. So make sure you remember the spelling. Um, oceanographer, okay, spelling. Equities, swings, what else? Um, yeah, you can see that most of the time, blue row and single row, they quite, you know, happen a lot in listening in the blank. So you don't want to make these mistakes, okay? Yeah, I would say this one is a difficult paragraph because most of the word, they're quite, um, you know, um, a difficult spelling. For example, okay, bilingual, right? Um, foreshadow, okay, predicament. So these are the words I would say. If you go through the material, you can be able to remember the spelling of it, okay? 
unashamedly, right? So this is something I would say, that's why I'm saying this material actually very helpful in terms of for those who don't have enough time to practice and your exam is coming soon. So even though your exam hasn't, you know, been um, scheduled yet or you haven't booked your exam yet, um, but I would suggest you if you do um, finish all of the practice, go through this material and see what is happening in your exam at the moment. Okay, unashamedly, spelling. Right, habitat. If you remember habitat, this is the word, the capital, the uh, letter H, right? Why? Maybe it's the name of, you know, something. United Nation, um, United Nation World Habitat. So it's, an, it's a pretty much like a noun phrase and it's a proper noun phrase. So you need to put capital letter. Okay, so I would suggest you guys to go through all of them and remember the difficult spell word. Okay, if you go through all of them, then um, definitely this, um, this topic will be easy. Okay, right, the next topic, I will pretty much um, ask you to go through and memorize is write from dictation. This is the most important topic in your listening and writing. So there is no way you can escape from this topic. And for those who aim for 65 and 79 plus, you guys need to perform well for this topic, okay? Right, so how can I be able to use the material in the prediction file? Apparently, you cannot be able to practice, right? Like I said, prediction file is about the um, solution. So they give you the answer. They give you the exam question. You need to go through it and need to remember it. But for write from dictation, you need to memorize. Okay, now why you have to memorize? The reason in here is spelling, right? So I have mentioned about this already. Spelling is the most important, um, you know, enabling skill, which is, you know, um, demonstrate that how did you go in your exam in terms of write from dictation. If you lose mark for your listening and writing, I look at your spelling and your spelling is low, you may make mistake for listening and uh, writing in terms of write from dictation. Okay, so you need to memorize all of them before your exam. Now, memorizing here is not like I have to, you know, make sure that every single word I need to remember, not really. I want you to just read out loud the sentence, right? And second, same as listening in the blank, I want you to remember the spelling of some of the words, some of the words that are difficult to spell. And some of the sentences that literally, you know, um, quite different from the other one. For example, for this sentence, you see how many comma you have in the middle, right? Architectural is the word that they um, student misspell a lot. So you need to remember how to spell architectural. For example, all industry spelling, right? Plurals, again, comma. That's why I want you guys to go through all of them. If you can, remember where you need to put comma and where um, you need to put the blue rows. Okay. So for example, um, also I want you to, you know, beside comma, okay, um, spelling, um, a difficult spell word, right? The next thing I want you to do is uh, focus on the long sentences. Okay, apparently short sentences, pretty much everyone can do it. For long sentences, sometimes you won't be able to, you know, remember 100% correct. So please go through it. For example, here, uh, phenomenon. Okay, this is the word that's still misspelled a lot. Sometimes you don't understand um, whether the speakers say a phenomenon or phenomena. Okay, now these two words, they are different. Um, one is a blue rose, the other one is a singular. Okay, so I want you to say phenomenon is a singular and phenomena is a blue rose. Okay, right, next one. Um, so go through all of them if you can. And just if you scroll down a bit more, you can be able to say that here you are. Um, remember, and then comma, right? Prestigious. So that's what I'm saying. The spelling can become, you know, difficult. Um, if you scroll down, 
you can see that some of the sentences, they have the apostrophes, right? For the apostrophes, um, if you already attended the lecture, you definitely know the rules of the apostrophes. So you go through here, you can be able to see that author and then apostrophe S, um, CT is founder, right? So these are the things that I want you to remember. Okay. What else? Mm. School summer programs. And um, there are some of them that are quite difficult, especially this is the word that I found in misspelling a lot. Um, there's one, archaeologist, archaeology, okay? Please, if I, you know, if you can go through the material and pay attention on this word. Um, and then if you scroll down a little bit more, some of the work, I'll say some of the sentences are quite different. Uh, for example, why this one? Um, 159, okay, often, and then comma, and then semicolon here. Okay, on Wednesdays, you have the blue rose, S, Wednesday, okay? So that's why, or college, um, these are the words that, you know, students make mistake a lot, or psychology, spelling, okay, capital letter, London, right? So please go through it if you can and try to remember the spelling. Okay, so that's how you use a prediction file. Okay, and um, today it's just a listening um, section. So I will pretty much make another video about the other section, like speaking or um, reading. So thank you for watching this uh, video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.